Welcome to the interesting podcast number 201. This episode is with the delightful Sandra Saad. Sandra and I were introduced through a mutual friend, Walt, and let me tell you, from the get-go, I knew we were going to have a great time. In this episode, we talk about her celebrating New Year's in Italy, growing up, spending her summers in Egypt, her band, Eye of the Sun, their writing process, getting to play at the Greek theater, the differences between performing music and acting, playing Miss Marvel in the Avengers game, doing stand-up over Zoom, her love of Brendan Fraser, and so much more. Sandra is a blast, and you're gonna love her. So buckle up, and let's get right into it, friends. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the interesting podcast number 201 with Sandra Saad. Theme song time. I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? Actually, how you just you went to Italy. Yeah. How was that? I've never been. I've always wanted to go. Banana tootie. Talk to me. A banana tootie. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was great. Are we recording right now? Oh, yeah. It all gets cut later. It? Yeah. Oh, we're in it. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, There's no <laughs> intro, Sandra. All this is getting cut out later. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, it's banana tutti. I was just going to say, this is an Apero Le Spritz. They drink that there. I barely know what it is, but you don't need I was to. like, I feel like we could have a cocktail. So yeah, boom, um, boom, boom. Exactly. Cheers. It you looks like water. water, but is it? Mm. That's much better. You're staying hydrated. I'm just saying the last time you saw me, I was quite inebriated. You so, were. You're blistered, dude. You know, let's just, uh, <laughs> let's keep it going. <laughs> good. Good. Yay. Yeah. I was telling Brandon, I was like, oh, I'm meeting Brian. And he was like, he was like, oh, fun. Um, so we should eat dinner now. This was at five. He was like, we should eat dinner now. Cause I assume you guys would be talking for another five hours. I was like, okay, cool. Um, right. I was right. like, I'm gonna go have a shot. <laughs> there you go. So you got the writer. There's a little prerequisite to hang out. Yeah. <laughs> One shot minimum. <laughs> I, I don't drink normally, but I feel like since the last time we were together, we're at a wedding. So <laughs> <I know. laughs> if only Walt and Libby were here getting married just right in front I of know. us again. <laughs> Make them do it again. Make it, I, I felt like I drank enough for both of us last time, which is a good night. Perfect. It's a good what, night that, for me. Perfect wedding. Can you, hey, Walt, Libby, if you're watching, can you get married again? Yeah, if you wouldn't like, mind, because uh, yeah, I, mean, I need an excuse. Other. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. And invite yeah. just us, so we could be the witnesses. Ooh, creepy, Ooh, love it. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll be on one side, you'll be on the other. That way there's there's people there. Great, we can have all all iterations of Spider-Man next time, too. Just Boom. one on each wall. We'll just, we'll have to fight over who's on Walt's side and who's on Libby's, though. Because I'm, I'm, I'm equally biased to both, yeah. Wow, we're mm. all just gonna have to stand in the. I know. Line yeah. in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Italy, though, you're not getting out of this. I want to know. Yeah, that's right. Um, had you, we had you, had you been before? No. Okay. Okay. Cool. I've only ever like, I I I think I told you I was born here and I was raised back and forth between here and Egypt. So cool. <laughs> I love Egypt. It's my home. But I was I've only ever been to Egypt outside of the country until. I went to Italy. <laughs> now all I have to talk about is Aperol spritz for some reason. <laughs> um, it was, it was yeah, yeah. It, was, it was lovely and like all oh, everything's so elegant. Yeah, except for like the American tourists. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah. stick out like a sore thumb, man. Of course, everybody hates us. Yeah. I found myself being loud and obnoxious. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God, nobody else is like us. Even Italians, you would think that, like, you know, Italians are boisterous. Like, not from what I found. Like, Americans are loud. You can hear really? them from down the street. <laughs> Someone's like, hey, what are you looking at? And you're like, oh, oh, that's an American. <laughs> so what you're saying is that the Italian big personalities that we know of are them coming to America and letting loose like Americans. Look, that's what I think. Okay, okay, that's just my- I respect this theory. Are we gonna have Italian people coming after me here? I Do feel you think like- Italians listen to this, Sandra? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to now. All the banana tutti like haters I met. Okay, that's another thing. So buen anno tutti, I oh, okay. think means um, 
Happy New Year, everyone. Oh, okay. I like that. First time I heard it, because we went through New Year. Yeah. First time I heard it, I was like, Banana Tuesday! (laughs) 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 Running around the streets of Venice. Banana (laughs) Tuesday! And everyone was like, oh. (laughs) There's an American. Got yeah, it. that's an American. We got to cut her off. Stop giving her Aperol spirits. I was like, I'm on espresso. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing. You don't drink coffee anymore when you come back. You're just like seeking out espresso. Oh, yeah. Has your has your tolerance gone up at all? No, it's no. just like it's so much smoother than coffee, I feel like. Okay. I had a mocha today. That counts, right? There's espresso in that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and chocolate, I think. Yeah, I like both of those things. Me too. And I require caffeine. Same. I think it's just being over, you know, 17 and alive. You need a little extra something, something. I feel like college must do it to most people. Yeah, probably. Those all nighters and studying. That's what I heard. Yeah. I, did you go to college? I didn't go to college. I did. I did uh, a lot of it, but like <laughs> for what I do, I found that like. <laughs> Like it was a thing, you know, it was an experience. <laughs> it was exactly like I yeah. I had a good time studying marine biology for many years and theater and like music history. I was like, I kept changing my major and then I just started working as an actor and like and doing other things like working on set. I was working on set a lot. And then I was like, I don't really need to keep doing this. Yeah. Goodbye, Sorry. sea turtles. So, <laughs> I, love, I love turtles and frogs. What? What was? Where did the marine biology stuff come in? That's a that's a specific thing to be interested in. Um, gosh, where did marine biology come from? I don't know. I think it may have come from like a love for seafood, which is oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, a morbid study, I think, or. That you're trying to get to know the things, you know, there's like intent. I'll spin this for you. Don't worry. I got Thank you. you. Thank you. for making me look good. Thank you so much. Do you yeah. want to be my agent? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, sushi? Hell yeah. What is this? I'm going to study this. <laughs> I remember my, fr- my first time dissecting a fish. Yeah. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, What's even though, here? like, you know, like, my mom, like, you know, she makes fish and she, like, cuts them up for real. And I was so grossed out when she did that growing up. But for some reason, dissecting one for educational purposes, <laughs> I was like, oh, hell yeah. Right. I don't want to eat it. I just want to see what's in there. Yeah. I want to yeah. smell it in its formaldehyde. <laughs> So you, so you said you bounced back and forth between here and Egypt? How young were you when that started? Oh, I was a kid. Kid, kid. Yeah. I'm not sure. I like I think my first time going I may have been 4. Wow. Yeah. And were you there for like long periods of time? Yeah, I think I was there for like at least a month to 3 months, like the summer. Okay. So I did all my schooling here and then in the summer I'd go to Egypt, which hot, but also I can't read Arabic <laughs> cuz I studied English here. <laughs> right. So, but you can speak Arabic. Yeah, but that's a problem when like I go into stores and I'm speaking to like shopkeeper in perfect Arabic. Yeah. And then I'm like, how much is this? They're like, <laughs> the sticker's right there. Are you fucking <laughs> no. with me? And you're like, no, no, I can't read. They're like, get out of my store. <laughs> no. Thanks. So as far as like speaking it versus understanding it with your ear versus reading it, which one is the most? Which one is the least? As far as Arabic is concerned. Ah, uh, I understand it better than anything. Yeah. And then I speak it like now pretty well. Mm-hmm. I used to so much more because, you know, when you're in the country, it's so much easier. Oh, for sure. And then reading, writing like it all, it looks like squiggles. Like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> are, are both your parents from Egypt? Yeah. Like my whole family. Yeah. Re- what part? Cairo. Oh, okay. The, yeah. the one place that I know where it is. Yeah, it's just okay. it's huge. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, where in SoCal are you from, LA? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> um, yeah, like, yeah, uh, Cairo's huge. Um, El Maedi is like one of the towns that some of my family lives in. That's cool. like kind of like the valley. Like, okay. I don't know. It's got like malls and stuff and everyone's like hip. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just my perception that watch sure. like if anyone in arabic hears in egypt hears this they're like 
<laughs> I remember getting my hair done and going to the mall. So like that's <laughs> that. Hey, a lot of people I find have a different perception of what other places are. So it's interesting yeah. to know. Okay, it's all in who you hang out with too, right? Like, mm, fair. If you go with your family, it's gonna be like, okay, we're sure. gonna make sure you're safe and only take you to places like the mall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very you know protected and like we're helicoptering you all the time. Sure. You know, like if I went with people like my age, like we're going to be hanging out we're gonna be in the streets and like going to clubs or whatever. And sure. I, my whole life, I was like, clubs don't exist in Egypt. There's <laughs> churches, there's mosques, there's malls. That's it. There might be pyramids. I don't know. There's also Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're really young, did you have like a preconceived notion going into Egypt for the first time? Yeah, well, it sucks. When you're young and you go to another country, all you can do is compare it to America. Mm, good point. <laughs> like you're you're not mature enough to understand like the beauty and the differences. Yeah. Right? Like when I was young, I was like, it's dirty. It's hot. <laughs> I want to go back to where the malls are, are, have places that recognize like Hot Topic or whatever. <laughs> so now I, I go back and I'm like, oh my God, everything is just, you know, like the styles and the architecture is so different. And you can really appreciate everything and like the people around you and like, yeah, sure, the dirt, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> just the differences in the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. And the food, oh my God, the food. Yeah. When you're young, all you want is like crackers and chips. <laughs> <laughs> I go back and I'm like, wow, real meat on a grill or whatever. Yeah. What's the, what's the go-to dish? If you're going to Egypt, what's the meal that you're like, ah, oh, I missed this one? Well. Talk to me. So many. Yeah? Okay, like if we want to talk desserts, Okay, let's talk desserts. There's like kunefa. I don't know if you've heard oh, of kunefa. No, what is this? It look <laughs> anything that has like cream in the middle and uh -huh. like syrup on top. Anything with that, you're good to go. Yeah. Um, cakes. They have like little cakes, little cookies called bitty four. Okay. Um, Everything is just like there's so much care that goes into the food. And then if you're like vegan, there's a million billion options uh, because like a lot of people are, are like vegan for most of the year sure. uh, in Egypt. And um, so they take a lot of care in, uh, in, in making vegan dishes. So there's this one called koshari okay. and it's like Egypt's dish. Um, and then of course, like then there's just the meats <laughs> that are just grilled. <laughs> and I don't know, for some reason it tastes different. Birds. Oh, <laughs> just birds. <laughs> <laughs> like pigeon. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> that's a big one. So much so that like when my family comes to visit and they see pigeons just like around, they're like, uh, are you going to do anything? You want to go get that? <laughs> the true abundance of America is our excess of pigeons. Yeah. We're yeah. not doing anything about it. We're just letting them. <laughs> How does pigeon taste? Have you tried it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like any other bird. Everything tastes like a, a type of chicken, doesn't it? Even things that aren't birds, it's like, it tastes like chicken. Like, yeah, yeah, just like smaller, less meat. <laughs> just smaller bites. <laughs> Much smaller. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think about alligator because I'm in Florida, of course, you know. That's alligator right. just tastes like a chewy chicken. Like, does yeah, it? It does. It's like not a bird. It's not a bird at all, but it's like chicken is just such the reference for meat, I suppose. <sighs> You're like, oh, yeah, it's like chicken, but like chewier, I guess. Duck is just like greasy chicken. It's like, what are we, what, why? Yeah. Is, how did chicken become? Because everyone knows what it is. Yeah, it's got to be right. But duck is like the greasiest meat ever. Right? I feel like, like so many people in Egypt have like heart problems. <laughs> like a lot of people in my ancestry have our heart problems. And I'm like, sure. maybe it's the duck. Maybe we should stop. Maybe stop greasing the runways, pal. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. I know. I had um, was it alligator? I think I had alligator once. Yeah, something. It's, it's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why I'm spacing. It's not snake. Is it? Is it snake? Maybe people eat snakes. People eat everything. I don't know what. I think maybe alligator. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. There's this like delicacy place like up in Ohio, um, mm -hmm. that like I was in a band that played there, and they were like, "Hey, try our." have whatever you want. And I was like, I don't have that. I have an alligator. 
I, they drenched it so much in like lemon juice that I couldn't taste it. But if it tastes like chicken, mm. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, just like a chewier version. What came first then? Was it music or was it acting? Like when did entertainment come into the mind? I think I like I was a I was a kid. I, yeah. Yeah, you know when you're uh, you're watching TV and you're like I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Still, yeah. Right. <laughs> I I was like I think I was like 2 or 3 or something. We were watching like Full House and I was like I could do that. I could be <laughs> Michelle Tanner. Yeah. And the other one could be both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know they were twins at the time like movie magic but yeah then like <laughs> i remember telling a family member and he was like no it was my dad i remember yeah. <laughs> Ex let's just expose this guy i was like i want to do that and he was like it's not for us oh, no. <laughs> you don't look like her it's not for you <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> okay <laughs> no i didn't take no for an answer yeah because you knew you knew full house interesting i hate that that's what did it that's right. We, we don't we don't get to pick, right? It's just a thing and you're like thing, the thing that clicks. But OK, well, then music. I don't know when it was that Selena, the movie came oh, out. Yes. Yes. When it came out or when I saw it or what. But I was like, oh, I'm going to be her. <laughs> My mom's like, that's Jennifer Lopez. I was like, that's Selena. <laughs> <laughs> like who? Give me a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Beady beady bomba. She looks like me. <laughs> to be fair, closer than Mary closer. Kate and Ashley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I can't be on TV, I can sing this. <laughs> yeah, I can shake it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My mom's like, "Oh Lord." <laughs> oh, here, here we go. I thought she goes to your dad. I thought you shut this down. <laughs> Finding options. I didn't say anything about music. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> So was it singing or was it like, did you pick up an instrument? Like what, what, what was it? Singing. It was singing. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was in, I was in high school and my uncle got me a guitar. Cool. And I was like, what do I, what do I do with this? And he was like, I don't know. That's up to you. You figure it out. Right. <laughs> you just get you one. And then it sat there collecting dust for many years. <laughs> I was like, where'd you get this? He's like, there's this website called eBay. It's real great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> eBay really was great. I mean, probably still is, but man, everything, the world is there. Yeah. I forgot about it uh, <laughs> until my, like my aunt, like a week ago, mm -hmm. my mom was like, Hey, I need like a milk frother. And she was like, I got one. It's amazing. It's on eBay. You should find it on eBay. <laughs> and I was like, that's not, they don't have like an inventory of things. It's just like a guy selling his stuff, you know? Yeah. And he was like, you're on eBay? She's like, oh, look who doesn't know the internet. <laughs> internet. Inter internet. <laughs> I kind of see eBay now as that like criminal cousin to Amazon's corporate, you know? It's like, yeah, we have whatever you need. But then the other guy's like, what do you want? And yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I could sell it cheaper. Slightly it used, but don't worry about it. It still works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? What do they say? Um, it's not make me an offer. It's oh something. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. Oh well. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's gone forever. Yeah. Buy this. That's, That's right. Thing. That's right. Or don't. I don't care. You got plenty of stuff. What are you looking for? Is the that should be the eBay Boom. a milk frother? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we we got we got one of those and one of those. <laughs> yeah, make me an offer. <laughs> oh something. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, something. <laughs> when you're in the States, where in the States are you that you're flipping back and forth between Egypt? Were you in L.A.? Yeah. What? Yeah, I was born in L.A. That's, nobody's born in L.A., Sandra. Yeah. And the people that are born in L.A. don't spend summers in Egypt. Yeah. Well, a lot of people I grew up with did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you try the solo thing, singing and whatnot? Or did you immediately, like, I need to have a band because Selena had a band? <laughs> I was also not interested in dancing uh, at all. Who needs it? Yeah, S Selena is great at everything, <laughs> but and J Lo, but uh, yeah. um, well, the music like I didn't know how to like sing without a band because I think like I even like the music I listened to, I had so much respect for bands. Like, sure, I don't know. I like when I was in high school, I was like super into the Beatles and like sure classical composers and stuff i'm down with that i was like yeah how how sing without 
yeah <laughs> musical instruments sure um which like now th then like i quickly learned like oh most people just <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't just say do musical instruments <laughs> but when i was like 18 19 like i met this band who like needed a backup singer and like i was just like kind of hanging out like going to shows and stuff and like got to be their friend and um or like we were friends and then i found out they were in a band and i was sure like, kind of going to shows and, and they like snuck me in and i wasn't 21 yet and there you go i remember getting kicked out several times when like dancers <laughs> found out but i was like i just want me here for the music whatever um <laughs> but brandon um who you met is my uh, uh -huh. great bandmate. a great great man uh he played bass for that band oh yeah and it was like a psychedelic rock band like very okay like zeppelin-y with like a female lead singer and then like very like also jim morrison like like the clothing was very like 60s 70s and then um brandon listens to different music than they do like psychedelic folk a little uh -huh. bit like experimental i see like, yeah like into like maybe like mellower stuff or like heavier stuff in a different way kind of also like more sabbath sounding stuff yeah and i was like 19 at this point when I, I was like discovering his music taste and i was like whoa what's this stuff you're listening to and he's like you yeah. never heard of the doors <laughs> <laughs> or, i don't know uh your education starts now <laughs> yeah yeah what have you been doing listening to the beatles forever no he <laughs> um but then we started our own band um i have this son and Amazing. he was like, I want to play guitar. I was like, what? You play bass so well. You play guitar? Yeah. He's like, yeah, well, I got to make some melody somehow. <laughs> Can't just be bass and a singer. So <laughs> yeah, you're like, well, I can sing. And that's real. That's how Eye of the Sun came to be. Yeah. And then uh, wow. the drummer from that band, Todd, um, became our drummer. So it's the three of us. And then um, Brandon and I started playing just uh, just him and I, I was like, I feel like picking up some drums and like I did a huge you go low floor Tom. Yeah, that 18 inch and uh, mallets and a cymbal. And then we stuck with that for a little while, like we toured a little bit. And then I like we like maybe a few years back, we're like, hmm, I think we need drums again, <laughs> like real <laughs> drums. Um, yeah, then we played the Greek theater. How was that? Year. I mean, just the musical history of like, the people who've been on that stage uh come on insane <laughs> like, yeah the mayor introduced us dude it was it it was great like the whole day i was like are we sure we're here because okay it was our first gig after the pandemic so it just felt like a fever dream yeah. all together <laughs> like yeah the mayor introducing us and then like we had we have a plaque now like a, a plaque at the greek theater that says our names dude or, like we signed off on it, each one of us, and it says Eye of the Sun and with the other bands that played with us. What? And like we were walking around the hallway of plaques and it was like Elton John, like Yeah. Every everybody, everybody. Everyone. So it was crazy. And you. And us. And us. <laughs> what? What? Um, but I was still like, I wanna play my drums. And then Todd was also with us. So that was like our last show playing with two ish drummer like one and a half sure. drummer <laughs> with an extra drum <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> because like as much as you like as close as you get like there's always gonna be like a millisecond off from mm -hmm. each other since it's like a drum hit sure saying like i'm still I'm, like trying to sing at the same time and mm -hmm. and then like todd was like behind there is you know the drummer's always like behind you so i can't like see and jive <laughs> without like getting off the mic but uh but but yeah that that like after that we had a, a big show like at the lotus festival in silver lake dude and that was our 10-year anniversary show wow so. just statistically speaking a band that's still together after 10 years is <laughs> deserves a plaque of its own before even, <laughs> before releasing an album yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works though right it's like you have your entire life up to the release of your first album but then the second one is like oh we're in now yeah 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 i i don't know brandon and i are very like we're a lot more relaxed now that like <laughs> that this one's finally like you know because we worked on it for so long and 
that's true there's always that like you said there's always that oh you only make your first album once the back of your head mm -hmm. so you're just working 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 trying to perfect it and the perfection is never done so facts like you start like whittling away until there's nothing <laughs> left and then you're like oh what have i done you got to rebuild it but um yeah now that this one we're like i wouldn't really care what it sounds like anymore just let's get out of the way <laughs> and then like the next one now we're like all right now that we're we've gotten that out of the way this can be fun and that's what the real creativity is when you have that sort of like freedom yeah now that that this one's almost done we're, we're like starting to write new songs again we have like four new songs and he's like Two. oh now there's there's no more room on our next album and it's gonna be full length so what do we do you know yeah i love it yeah i remember the talking about like what is this band gonna be called like i don't i don't remember how long that that went for but i remember like brandon was like how about in the eye of the sun and i was like that's very long <laughs> eye of the sun <laughs> much better yeah you can make acronyms out of it eots for sure yeah yeah that stands Although, for something cool there is this band called eyes of the sun oh we have to fight them yeah i get it i understand they're like metal or something mm -hmm. like they don't sound like uh which is like good imagine <laughs> we sounded the same then we really have to fight them but brandon i remember was like trying to upload like our masters into his itunes and they kept putting on that other band's album cover oh no and he was like let me listen to this and he was like all right no one's gonna be confused <laughs> they're good they're just not us <laughs> sure oof i've seen the one with jet lee i know these rules it's good that you're not the same because if you were time uh -oh. and place time and place <laughs> <laughs> they'd wipe the floor with us man <laughs> no no you have two drummers that's right mallet sandra you got to believe in yourself <laughs> yeah mallet <laughs> yeah. what's it what's your writing process do you do music first lyrics first do you bounce um i think it it changed like it depends sometimes like i'll have a lyric that i think is cool and like i'll just write it down then i'll forget about it and then now i have like a notebook full of like one-liners and i'm like Okay, what am I gonna do with these? <laughs> so that's not the way to go. What seems to work better for me is like, you know, Brandon and I hang out all the time. He's my neighbor. So like he'll just he'll just have his guitar all the time and he'll be noodling all day and I'll be hanging out and then sometimes I'll just start singing. Um that's how this new song we, we've been working on this new song. I know what it's gonna be called. It's gonna be called Not Here. Cool. And he was just noodling like a week ago and i was like man that's so pretty what is that i've learned to ask this because if i don't <laughs> sometimes i'll just write like a melody line over an existing song and he's like no no this is this is like an elton john song or whatever <laughs> but uh he's like and what, if he shrugs then i'm good yeah so like i just I, I remember i was like exhausted it was like midnight or something and i just like hit record because if I don't, I'll forget everything. And then I just kind of started like meandering through like a lyric because that's all I had. And then the next day it got stuck in my head and I was like, oh, cool. There you go. And then when you get a concept going, that's when you're like, oh, so that you're not writing about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to be a little, a, a little bit of cohesion, maybe. Yeah, no, like I, it's gotta mean something to me because if it doesn't, or or it could be like a complete joke, like both of those. Sure. As long as you're hitting some like emotional button, then great. Yeah. But I think like this one's gonna be about um, like leaving a place that's dangerous to you and like having a having the courage to go somewhere better. And I was like, okay, well that that like that hit. So now I'm just gonna write over it. And then Brandon now he's like, all right, can you send me that? Because I don't remember what I was playing, right? Because I didn't remember what I was singing. So I sent it to him, and he was like, all right, here's some parts that I've worked out. And for the bridge, what do you think? And so then we get together, and, and like he's he's written this bridge now. And, I'm like, all right, let me wrap my head around that and write some like a melody to it. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. That's sort of, you get that like creativity brainstorming hive, like, oh, 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 and it sort of organically comes together. That's, that's the magic, isn't it? Yeah. And then that also does require like some, for, for us sometimes requires like separate like work, right? Like I can't really work at home. 
because like home is my hang <laughs> place like totally turn on the tv that's what i do or i fall asleep sure i like i have to go to like a coffee shop or something where there's things going on to keep me up and then there's caffeine also <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but like I'll I'll work on words and I'll work on words and like I'll throw stuff out and I'll erase stuff I'll tear pages out and like if I even get one lyric that that like fits then it's it's been a good day but sometimes it, sometimes it work hours and hours and you won't get anything or one one line and you gotta just dismiss it and like or like just keep just be like all right I'm calling it a day that was good work and then some days like you'll sit down for five minutes and like everything will come out so I gotta record everything. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good at that? Like letting things go? Like not hammering to try and make it perfect? Perfect. Why did I say it like that? Perfect. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> perfect. Yes. Perfect. Here we go. <laughs> got to make it perfect. Got to make it perfect. Everything must be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you have to let things go. Like, yeah. Especially as an actor. Like, I oh, for sure. I've noticed this in my auditions. Like, and, and with like laying down like vocal tracks for Fry the Sun, like, if I record things more than a couple times and it starts to get stale, mm -hmm. like even when you go the first or second time, like you barely know like what you're doing and like you're shuffling through, maybe that third time is like golden, you know? Uh huh. Yeah, like you, you gotta just let stuff go. I found the same thing. It's like anything after five is not good. Like max, I gotta give myself max five. Cause after that, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm nitpicking where my hand's going. It's like, this is not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then, cause you start to lose the point of it all. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like this was this, I, I only just started learning. Like I'm not. Ditto. I ha I'm not like letting go of it. All. Yeah. It's hard. Right. <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> <sighs> like I, I know because like Brand so Brandon, um, is my song, songwriting partner, like my bandmate, my neighbor, my best friend. And he, produced our album he engineered it and he mixed it dude he's he's kind of a genius like yeah a little bit he's reading right now like i don't know if you heard him of playing course he is he's playing guitar he's reading a book <laughs> oh that guy so smart <laughs> um i like if he hears this he'll just be like oh, stop never done learning <laughs> he won't hear this he's too busy reading <laughs> He's learning while we're talking about banana tooties, Sandra. <laughs> banana tooties. <laughs> we're not the same. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll come back to Italy. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Brandon, look, like after many years of, because we tried to, like years ago, we sat down and we tried to record like our earlier songs. And, you know, we're still learning and, and figuring stuff out. And our sound wasn't quite there yet. We we're kind of still trying to figure it out I would sit there and I would record and record and record until my voice couldn't take it anymore until my voice started cracking and he's like you don't have to do that to, to yourself <laughs> like, it's okay we just the first two takes are good and I'm like two are you insane we're on take 57 I'm not there yet let me just drink a little tea of course like yeah put your headphones on Brandon <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like how are you gonna listen to all this and pick I'm like, yeah. we'll figure that out. And then later <laughs> when we had to sit down and listen to all 57 takes and I wasn't Ooh. happy with any of them. Cause you know, you're so in your head when you're trying to make things perfect. If you're just like thinking about what the point of the song is or what the point of the scene is, or like, I, I try to always think about what the writer wanted. Ooh, yeah. If I don't have a director and it's just you, right? Like if you're recording auditions or like, I don't know, that's what's crazy about like recording your own songs is you have to be like, oh, well, what did the writer? <laughs> you are the writer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask real quick. Hold on. Hey. Well, yeah, then you're like, uh, you have to like take yourself back to like where you were when you first wrote it. That's like also like an acting thing. I don't know. But yeah, like, when I feel like I'm losing sight of like, or when I'm getting like robotic or whatever, in my auditions or like when I'm getting hung up on little things I stop and like I'll forget about what I just all recorded and I go back and read the scene from top to bottom and be like all right I think I know what the writer was really trying to say gotcha okay you know do you find do you find acting or music to be easier to perform like personally which one do you go like I can I can pull this one out music yeah yeah although like I don't know. I have a tendency of writing stuff that's like right on the edge of my ability and Brandon too. That's good. That's what you want. That's how you grow, right? Yeah. It gets, it's tiring, you know, yeah. <laughs> especially as one gets older and their voice changes, mm -hmm. but then you have to adjust, right. And like come up with new solutions for how to 
you know, play or sing, sing those songs. But acting, I think, I don't know, like music's really great for me because Brandon and I are so close and Todd, like the three of us really know how to play with one another. And like, we love each other so much. Yeah. With, you know, like when you're acting, you just hope the the other actors just as passionate as you are yeah please don't be a dick yeah. also as well like oh yeah. man you never know what you can please get. mesh yeah <laughs> but then i've learned to just like really we we're talking about letting go with acting you gotta let go to the director and like sure i think when when i realized that i think it was on avengers because i was really into like watching the scenes and stuff sure you had kind of a big role <laughs> yeah I, it's also like so fascinating to me like it wasn't about my performance as much as like oh let's see what we're doing and then i think like my second time asking if i could see yeah like so i was like hey trust me like the director i was like <laughs> oh i i do and then I realized like, oh, part of me wants to see that to be like, hey, maybe can we try another take or, you know, the actor thing. I don't like yeah. how my mouth did that. Let me can I get another one? You're like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, because you don't see what they see. And correct, you know, he's looking at it from every angle. And, you know, he's looking at the other actors and like the placement of the furniture and whatever it as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he had to say that once for me to really just give him ev everything. Like, like, like we said earlier, I it doesn't take much. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> One person, be like, mm, I got it. Oh God, yeah, you do. You're yeah, right. yeah. You're right. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I think you got to really learn to um, to trust everyone to do their job and. Um, sure. Yeah. Like that, that's, that's why I think music is, is like, like slightly like easier, a little bit more like chill is because I trust Brandon and Todd a hundred percent. Right. Makes total sense. Yeah. You have that sort of security in each other. Yeah. We're like, we, we have each other's back. So it makes you more creatively like uh, adventurous. Yeah. Like, oh, we can do this because we're doing it together. Yeah. Makes total sense. And like you visited these songs, you know, like <laughs> yeah, a bunch. You know this. I won't say that because you know how much I like, I forget my lyrics all day. So I won't say <laughs> You knew this. I, I knew this. <laughs> I know how much went into writing those songs. I know how many drafts and how many like hundreds of pages I go through for every every time I sit down and write a song and how many like hours. So like, I don't know, like I don't trust that I'm a like the best songwriter in the world, but I trust that I worked hard. Yeah. And to the edge of my ability. But same same deal here. You got to just trust the writers and like put yourself in their head and be like, OK, what are they like? What do they want from me? How was it now that I'm thinking about you? Yeah, I have the sun. You're playing at the Greek theater, the history with that. As a musician, how cool was it having Miss Marvel announced at Madison Square Garden? Oh, man. Look at these moments in your life, Sandra. These <laughs> happened. These were Brian. real. <laughs> um, ah, right? Amazing. Like it's real. That, that really happened. Moments like that make me really believe in God. <laughs> right? I'm like, right? Ah, only you. Only Come you can on. do this. Yeah. Uh, all grace, all grace to God. Um, yeah. I, this is so morbid. Okay. Like, Let's but do it. I'm in. I like going, like stepping onto each of those stages. I've, I've been like, all right, I'm cool here. Like I'm done. Like I can go anytime. <laughs> We've you know? made like, it. <laughs> <laughs> here, Sandra Lay, she played <laughs> the Greek <laughs> theater and was on the Madison Square Garden stage. Cool. Right. What more do you want? Come on. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> I don't need no legacy. This is this is a legacy on its you own. You got a plaque, all right? Yeah. That counts. <laughs> I'll be memorialized forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't need I don't need kids. So I got this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. That's my favorite thing to do when like I'm hanging out with people and like going through your life. I'm like, do you do you ever just like sit and think that this is a real thing that happened to you? You know, like that three year old Sandra. That's like I could do that. Uh, maybe a little bit. Then you're flash forward. Madison Square Garden's the lead of an Avengers game. What? You know, I think sometimes you gotta, yeah. Like, I don't, I, I don't think about that stuff like that. It's probably best because if you did, <laughs> it might get a little weird. No, <laughs> it's nice to, it's nice to be reminded of it though. Thank you, because you know, I think like as a as an artist, like we we work so hard, and I auditioned so much, Brian. Yeah. And I've been working so hard on this album, or Brandon has been working so hard on this album. <laughs> that 
you know, sometimes you for, you forget that like, oh, I've actually done something really, really cool and I can I can be happy about that or Yeah, know. a little bit. Yeah. How how long did you work on that? Because games take forever to make. Game yeah, that oh wow. Um feel, we started like I feel like spring of 2018 yeah keep saying 2017 but it's not 2017 it is 2018 and then um yeah and then when did it come out 2020 yeah i think so it's a long time yeah like the end of 2020 because i think i went in for like a couple of vo sessions in 21 yeah because we did mocap in 2018 like all of 2018 some of 2019 and the rest was vo dude it's pretty cool as far as gigs go, pretty good one. Is the Golden Joystick Award heavy? Yeah, yeah. it is. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> I couldn't believe I got this box. I was like, what is this heavy box? <laughs> what kind of Amazon package is this? <laughs> what I order on eBay and forget? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this a milk frother? <laughs> yeah. It's a heavy. No, yeah, it's heavy. It was pretty heavy. Like, yeah. they they really, like, put so much care into, like, wrapping it to make sure it's safe. And it has my name in, on it. Yeah, it does. It's cool. I cleaned it yesterday. Did you? What? Do you, okay, where, where, do you, where do you have it? I have it by my TV. Cool. <laughs> I don't know who, who it was that was, like, I don't know who it was, but they were, like, you should display that in your house. <laughs> yeah. I was like, because I don't know. I don't want it to get hurt. I mean, should I keep it in my closet? And they're like, yeah. no. <laughs> you had to get one of those display cases with like <laughs> laser things on it. Oh, my God. I wanted to, but then I, I'm not going to act on that. So I yeah. just put yeah. it out. All the dust <laughs> collects. And I'm like, that's fine. I could clean it. Yeah. Yeah. For the rest of history, that year, Golden Joystick Award winner. Pretty oh, yeah. cool. Dude. <laughs> Did you ever watch that video? Of- I did. Of Travis and Laura giving it to you. I watched that once. I was like, I can't handle this. <laughs> I watched it to figure out how to pronounce your name. And then you told me it's different. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, is it Sandra or is it Sandra? You're like, it's Sandra. I go, okay. Oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> okay. That. Um, Sean, the director of Avengers, is um, Trinidadian. Got it. So that's how he says Sandra. Like, it's not. Okay. That's he's fair. He's not trying to say Sandra. So, uh, yeah, it's like even it's like more it, it's like more beautiful, even the way he says it, because <laughs> um, he's actively not saying Sandra, uh, like right. not trying to. So everyone thought that he was because of the way he was pronouncing it. And oh. even like the people who would introduce themselves to me and I'd say Sandra and like, I'm not picky, like, I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, you'll answer to it. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> no. So, yeah, like everyone on set was calling me Sandra, but like my second day on set, I ran into a makeup artist who I used to work with a lot. And like, right. she's known me for so long and I was so happy to see her because I was in this new world, this mocap world where, and like, don't know anybody, don't know how anything works. Like I was getting introduced to actors who like, like Troy and, and, and like Nolan and like, I don't legends. Yeah. And like, I don't know the, the weight of everything around me. Uh-huh. Cause I really just felt like fish out of water. And as soon as I saw her, I like dropped my stuff and like had tears in my eyes and I ran to her <laughs> screaming. Everyone was like, Oh, our new actress is really <laughs> like, what's going on? Sandra, Sandra, are you okay? <laughs> but as the day went on, she was like, did you notice people are mispronouncing your name? And I was like, oh, sure, whatever. And she's like, girl, you're number one on the call sheet. That's a big deal. I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. And she was like, no, no, no. (laughs) She's like, yeah, people should be pronouncing your name right. And even if you weren't number one on the call sheet, I I was like, I'm not about to tell anybody who works for Marvel (laughs) that they're saying my name wrong, you know? (laughs) She's like, I will. I was like, girl, what (laughs) i remember like people like high up people were like hey sandra get on over here sandra and and she comes up to like touch me up and she's like actually you're mispronouncing her name and they're like excuse me and i'm like actually yeah megan's known me for a really long time it's sandra but like what a pal uh what like a she's so great but then of course people just kept hearing sean say sandra so they're like oh that moment didn't exist. It was <laughs> That's, but again, doesn't bother me. That's your litmus test now. The people that call you Sandra versus Sandra. You're like, oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a small, <laughs> it was a small moment, but to me, it, it, it was a big deal because Huge. she like, she really, you know, crew, crew doesn't get 
like very much respect and for or like not even not respect as much as like you know your your crew you're there to like totally I, different I different know. department different vibes i know just what you mean i used yeah. to i used to work as a crew member like for for years and years and years and and i know what it's like to pe for people to just be like, oh, you're the powder girl or whatever. So sure. So it, I, I would never have done something like that. So it meant a lot to me that she was like, you know. Yeah. She didn't, so. I love that. Yeah. How did you end up on Call of Duty? I auditioned. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I hear that's how those things work. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. That first one. Yeah. Yeah. I think like I just sent in a a, a clip. Um. They needed some like Arabic, I think. And then um, when I got there, they're like, Oh, like you like perfect American accent. And I was like, Yeah, that's I was acting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, wow, she's really yeah. Good. <laughs> and then they kept bringing me back for like, you know, like characters with the, um, you know, American accent. Or yeah, Western. you get it. Yeah, I get it. I'm Western. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Last I checked globally speaking how fun was the day at the range i saw this video you made oh, with yeah. the call of duty peeps elias tufexus was there yes He's elias the previous guest yeah that's right love elias look like so much fun he's so cool um he's too cool like it makes <laughs> no sense how one human being can just be that cool yeah ridiculous uh, a lot of those call of duty folks are like real chill yeah. Oh, where's all that <laughs> screaming come from? <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great. I, <laughs> I that was like we got gun training. Like yeah. I now know how to like properly hold and shoot many different kinds of guns. Get it? And it like it was trained by some some like professionals. So uh, it was cool. It was a, like it was a hot day, and like. I was like, I didn't know what we were filming, but I was like, okay, <laughs> I put makeup on. All right. So yeah, we, like we, we looked cute for like a short percentage of the time, but like for the most part, we were there to shoot and it was awesome. Was that before or after the game? After, after. I think because all of us were from different Call of Duties. So yeah, like I met this, uh, yeah, this one girl, Julia, I think she was in, I don't know which one she was in. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know I get it. But yeah, yeah, like everyone was so cool. Um, when I came back, I was like, I know, I know how to hold a gun. I know all this about guns. And then <laughs> my friends were like, Oh, are you getting a gun? And I was like, No, I just know how to hold one for real. When I go in <laughs> for an audition, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> there you go. If I needed to, I could. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember like going in. I went in for an audition for something else, and they're like, Okay, well, this is like a very serious like military character. Um, I remember the casting director was like, you know, like you play Miss Marvel. She's like a 16 year old. This is not, I was like, I get it. I was acting. Okay. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I'm not 16. <laughs> I don't just go psh, psh, all day. I get it. <laughs> so, so like I went in and they handed me like a, an AR 10. Sure. I knew how to hold it. There you go. And they were like, Oh, how do you know how to hold an AR 10? I was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> How's this for 16, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was that comment too, that really got me to like study hard. Like I watched all these like military movies or whatever, but, but yeah, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes like you land like a really cool role and they're like, you know, you know, you played Miss Marvel, but this is an adult. You know, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, you're not 16 in this one. <laughs> and you'll have a gun. They're loud. <laughs> yeah cover your ears and shoot at the same time now <laughs> yeah, exactly um, so i know you also played miss marvel in the uh animated show spidey yes yeah. spidey is amazing friends did you have to do anything different playing her because it's a different medium yeah it's like a video game that's kind of for like you know adult audiences and kids also but the other one is clearly more kids friendly like how did yeah how'd you end up miss marvel again and what do you have to do differently oh i mean like I did audition for that one like really intensely from I mean both of them um sure but Spidey I I thought that since I had been playing Miss Marvel for years <laughs> that I had this in the bag but sure. <laughs> I was wrong different director different medium different like like you said age group um yeah 
like she didn't also like know who I was. So I was being considered from level one, like everyone else. That's, that's got to feel great when you get it though. Cause then you're like, yeah. Hey, I remember, um, I think I was like at the callback or something with the, um, director. And she was like, you're playing her a lot older than I want her to be. And I was like, I'm playing her 16. And she was like, oh yeah, this is a, this is a preschool series. Sure. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, so so how do you want her? She's like preschool. I want her to be preschool age. Yeah. So I aged her down a lot. Um, and that's I don't know that like after like working with it for like you know I I like you'll do this thing where you like kind of rehearse the um character to like find the voice like with the director for a little bit until like they stop you and they're like okay cool let's record that and so that's your reference as soon as gotcha so we did that for a while uh what do they call it audition the character or rehearse the character? yeah yeah <laughs> it worked it's great i think look i mean this miss marvel faces different things than the miss marvel that we know in the game like since it is for like an older audience and it's for a video game like there's a lot more like internal struggle and you know like it's a lot more human sure way more depth yeah way more depth and there's like some fear and anxiety and like insecurities and and like toil and things that she's working with and it like it's it's it, it is more adult and um you know, a preschool series. Kids don't want to see that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you don't want to show kids that. No. So there's been a few times where like I'd give a line and then I'd have to catch myself and be like, okay, this this isn't fear. Like this is this is like fighting Miss Marvel. She's got this. She's coming in to help, not yeah. to like talk, yeah. you know, to Bruce about his feelings or whatever, you know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You're coming to solve the problem, not figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's also like you know 15 minute episodes right this is the spidey show so like i'm like a friend who will come in to help when he needs stretchy arms <laughs> right <know>? yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool though yeah how much fun was it uh working on league of legends oh yeah because nyla just sounds like the most fun role ever and like how much of that is efforts oh you know actually not not as many as you would think really yeah that in yeah right like hats off to riot like right they are a company that they know what they want and yeah. like <laughs> i i i love i love them i love working with them and they're so nice and like so appreciative of like your talents you walk in and yeah it, it's it's awesome it's a great company i love them and and i love that character and um yeah this our um my director is so great she is a woman her name is Maddie, uh, I've worked with her on so many games at this point. I don't even know how many. But every time I walk into the room and like I see her little zoom icon, I'm like, yes, you go, Maddie. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's so great to like, and I feel like that with Sean too. Like, yeah, like, I'm so glad that I'm I'm this deep in into my career where oh, like sure. I know directors and like you get stoked when you see their names pop up. Yeah. Well, it's like you said, working with friends before, you have that sort of security of like, oh, we're, I'm, I feel more free to be creative because I'm not like, I don't know anyone. I got to figure this out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, the artwork is really, really beautiful. Yeah, oh, yeah. That one too. And what a character. It just sounds fun. You get to have a good time. Yeah. You're in like this badass like fighting game, but you're like, hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I loved it. It was fun. <laughs> I'm down with that. I'm down with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm kind of painting, I'm painting a picture in my head. You got acting, you got bands, you got music, you got video games. When did you decide to try stand up? Oh my God. It's not the same. And I would never do it because I'm not that brave. Oh, me either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, well, okay. I did improv for a long time. Improv and sketch. Sure. I was at the Groundlings and the UCB for like seven years or so. Amazing. Yeah. Around, around. Yeah. Um, and then when the pandemic hit and we couldn't do improv with each other, I was like, I want to do funny stuff still, but I can do it on my own with stand up. Oh. And I've always wanted to try stand up. I've always loved stand up. Like, oh, yeah, I love it so much more than improv, dude. Like, I love Same. I don't want I don't want to like I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing. OK, I know. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to like every flavor of ice cream the same. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a lot of like teamwork and like a lot of really great things totally. that I, I've learned from improv. And, you know, I think I'm going to. Yeah, I want to do it again. Sure. But yeah, stand up. I've 
like I used to go watch friends do open mics. Like th that's how much I loved stand up. Nice. But I was always like, I don't know how to do this. Like, what do you what do you write about? But during the pandemic, I was like, I had I had just so many friends that did it um, that also did um, improv who were like, hey, let's like do these Zoom shows. And I was like, what? <laughs> you mean with like squares watching it? Like you can't hear them laugh, like what? And then like, if you do hear them laugh, it's like off. So you don't know exactly what they're, but like my first stand-up show was a Zoom one. And like- Really? Yeah, I was, I was going to mic after mic after mic. Cause that was like, you could still do that. Like you could go out and, and do open mics. I found this local one and I was just going all the time and I got to know like, okay, this is the type of humor that like all of the people who go here do. <laughs> sure. And, and then you're like, okay, what kind of humor do I like? And then I started watching like all the specials that were out at the time. And yeah, like, then you're like, okay, who am I kind of like, anyway. Sure. What is my thing? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to like, do comedy that other people do like yeah. <laughs> do what you think is funny yeah so i did that for a little bit um and then i haven't I haven't done it in a while i think I had, I had a show at flappers sometime uh in the last couple months but do you get nervous yeah do you get more nervous for music or comedy oh comedy 100 percent. yeah gotta be right I, that's why I'm so afraid of it because comedy, like art's relative, sure, but comedy is like immediately that wasn't funny or it was. Yeah. And you can't dictate what somebody else is going to find funny. Bro, like laughter is involuntary, okay? Yes. And it, if, if, if someone like really laughs, like, you know, you know if that's real or not. <laughs> I, I would like to do comedy in Florida. Sure. That, that's where you are. Yep. But just to see the difference because like, oh yeah, I've done comedy in New York and it's amazing. Like I did the best in New York, which is crazy. Like I'm like, this is real. This is where real comedy lives. Like, are <laughs> you sure I'm funny? But I, I don't know. It's interesting. I feel like most of the LA shows I go to, people are like on their phones and they're like waiting for their friends to go up and stuff like that. You know, like even when I go to a friend's show, like, you know, I pay attention to what's going on, but I am also like, I'm an artist, so sure. I'm not going to fake a laugh. Like I, I can't, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. But if I laugh, like I'm a, like, I, I do think a lot of things are funny. So like, I'm a pretty good audience member otherwise, but I would never take my phone out and look at it while yeah. a human being is in front of me, to, you know? I, I'm right there with you. You don't do that. What if they say something funny? I know you'll miss it. And then you lost yeah. a laugh. We need those. If it's that bad, like if it, like, if it's like, it's horribly offensive, I will get up and leave. Like, totally. that's fine. I've done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not often, but I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has a line. I get it. Yeah, but I... I was just doing comedy, you know, for fun. And um, yeah, like when it, I, I got, I get really nervous, like before I go up and then like the first two minutes is, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's Sandra, not Sandra. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> no problem, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Have you bombed yet? Oh yeah, yeah. You shake it off easy? I know it's part of the thing, but like you, you still feel. I, look, if I didn't have a following already and didn't have a career at like a blooming career as an actor, then I would be fine with it. Like if nobody knew who I was, like if, if like people didn't find me and see that I had a verified account, I'd be okay. But like, there's just something about knowing that you have like a little bit of something that people could point to and be like, that's the girl who's verified. She <laughs> sucks or whatever. Is that what her material is about? You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't want anybody, you know, fine. I don't want that. I want, I don't want attention when I do comedy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I want to be funny. I want to leave like everyone else. <laughs> I want to make some laughs and dip. Uh, yeah, no, then you know, there's like the dudes who want to talk to you after. Yeah, <laughs> Actually, you should try this ending. How about I end this now? <laughs> <laughs> Is there something, as far as I'll say, just say to limit it to acting, I guess, is there a role that you have that'd be like a dream role that you're like, I haven't done this yet, but this would be really, really cool. Oh my God, there's so many. Yeah? <laughs> um, give, me so, give me so much you got. Let's put it out there. It's so funny that I'm wearing this, but... <laughs> oh yeah. Love it. I love, oh, I love Lil so much. She's like my, my like voiceover... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> is the person who plays Phil and Lil on um, Rugrats. This is a coincidence. Yeah, um, yeah, that's what it is. Th <laughs> that, that wasn't going to be my answer, but now that I'm wearing this. But, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> no, dying to be on a show like um, Bob's Burgers. 
Oh, yeah. The Office. Or now I'm giving you like a real like left turn. Okay. Okay. Have you seen The Whale? I'm Okay. I'm scared too. I really, really want to, but I know I'm going to unravel. So I've like waited for the moment where I have an afternoon. Okay. Give me, give me a taste where we at. I can see it in your eyes of like, there was Sandra before and after watching it. I watched it two days ago. I, I, like, I was just talking to Brandon. I was like, okay, I'm going to go do Brian's podcast. Oh, just, I hope I don't talk about the whale for three hours. And he's like, <laughs> you will. Um, yeah. Well, the, the woman who um, plays Liz, or like the actress who plays Liz is just incredible and like, she played that role so so well and yeah that's like kind of a i don't know i i just i have so much respect for that that character and that casting too yeah yeah that's that's all i'm gonna say about that um, okay okay yeah so it, i'm into that that movie was so good man like yeah I, like i'm telling you like comedy is my deal i yeah. love being silly <laughs> but there's something about a role like that in a movie like that okay i'll tell you one thing talk to me I love Brendan Fraser so much. Dude. How can you not? How can you not? He gives me hope for humanity. Yeah. The fact that he exists, I'm like, okay, cool. I'll keep going now. Him and Ki Hyu Kwan, everything, every time they talk, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I could keep going. Those two is like, oh, oh, there are lights in the world. Got it. Yeah, it's nice to have that. Yeah, <laughs> like you like, exist. Well done. I, cool. Like in the last couple of days, I like I've been posting stuff about Brendan Fraser. <laughs> Good. The was it the Renaissance? Br Renaissance? Renaissance. Oh, but but I was like, yo, nobody better tell me anything bad about this man. Like I just want, <laughs> like you know, everyone's like trying to. Everyone's always ruining your joy. Like, yeah. oh, actually, here's an article about how whatever. I don't care. I don't want to know at this yeah. point. Like, Same. let me have my joy with this man. But yes. Brennan Fraser was my first crush ever. Rightfully so. The Mummy. George of the Jungle. Of course. How can you not fall in love? Yeah. Excuse me. George just lucky sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I mean, okay, and then my crush has carried over into the whale. Like that heart is the same. The heart is the same, and like, okay, you know how he gets goofy sometimes. Like uh -huh. he'll, he's it, what was it? Fla uh, blast from the past. Like you see that goofiness in there, and like George of the Jungle. Like, like that goofiness is within him and i love those moments that you can see in an actor like maybe who they are a little bit yeah and he gives you a little bit of that in the whale just like oh a couple of seconds of real brennan comes out and you're like that's you that's you it's that it's that like spiritual recognition of like oh, i see your soul here yeah i pay i'm picking it up if if what it is is like a goofiness that's how i know that he's a good guy because you know yeah what you like watch you watch like you like if you're like really into an actor and like you, you're just like watching all their stuff and you notice like an eeriness in there that like content that's just in every movie or every character they play or something his is a goofiness and in a movie like the whale you could still see it <laughs> brian i'm trying so hard to keep things in right now i don't want to spoil this for anybody but especially you my friend look i will message you as soon as i watch it please do Oh, well. This is the most honest movie I've ever seen in my life. Really? It you're living with someone in their home for like a period of time and it is so private and anything like if you're living with anyone in their home and watching every private move they make, it's going to be sad. Oh, for sure. And uncomfortable, but 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 yeah. the whale like it <laughs> I, I don't have the I don't have the correct words. All your people listening again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. I'm looking for things to make me cry all the time. Well, you found it. That's why I haven't seen it. Yet. I'm like, I need to clear an afternoon because I know I know myself well enough. Just seeing the trailer, I was like, ooh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna need I might need a couple days after this one. It's so beautiful. Yeah, that's that's another thing. Days. Um, watch it during the day. Got it. So that you have plenty of time to palate cleanse and like talk to people and and like get yourself out. Because I've been in it for a while now, but so yeah. have my dreams. <laughs> no. We need to add to your your acting goals to work with Brendan Fraser. Ooh. Gotta throw oh that my on. God. There. Oh, throwing him out there. Come on. I'm see. telling you, you just a like, little <laughs> little tear just welled up. He's one who'd be like, her name's Sandra. I love that man so much, dude. I love that man. He's a beautiful man. He's beautiful. He's so beautiful, dude. He's so beautiful. Ah, uh, he's so ah. Uh.
He's so beautiful. You know, to recognize a beautiful soul takes one. Brian. And just like that, Sandra, we've been talking for over an hour. Brian. And a half. Look at you. Oh, is that, is that it? <laughs> it happened. I feel like I haven't said anything like important. <laughs> the whale is so good. <laughs> do, you, do you think the show was important, Sandra? Walt did not warn you adequately. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that it's interesting. Has this been interesting? Yeah, yeah. It has for me. I'm glad this happened. I'm glad that we... Me too! It's interesting because a lot of times, I would say a good 97%, just to throw a random high number up there, of people that I have on the show I've never talked to before. And you and I have actually spent some time together. So I was nervous in a different way. Why? Because I actually kind of knew you. And I was like, oh, I don't have this... <laughs> I don't know. And you got to know me cranked to 11, which is the inebriated version. <laughs> and you still said yes. So thank you. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Thank you for being so supportive of um, of, of like Eye of the Sun and, of course. Of, you know, of my acting career and everything. Dude, I'm right. I'm right or die, especially for people that have been on the show now. It's like, I don't have bail money, but I'll go to jail with you. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we didn't even talk about Jack White once. This is Jack White. <laughs> This is Jack White. Okay, here we go. We're going to go out with this. Brendan Fraser, Jack White. You asked me this after I watched The Whale. Brendan Fraser. Okay, that's what I thought. I just had to be sure. This one's for Brendan. <laughs> if Brendan listens to this, he needs to know that he outranks Jack White in your life, which is saying a lot. It's saying a lot. There's the Oscar, and then there's this. Brendan, I love this man, but I love you more. Don't tell this man. Yeah. <laughs> Before I release you back into the wild, I got to ask, where can people find you online? Where can they find Yay. your stuff? Talk to me. Um, okay. My Instagram is Sandra Ramsey Saad, R-A-M-Z-Y. Um, so is my Twitter. Um, and then my band's Instagram is Eye of the Sun. Our first album should Woo-hoo. be coming out very, very soon. So excited. Yay. So excited. <laughs> it's going to be great. I'll continue to loop Call to the Moon because I just, I love it. Ah! Thank you. I love it <laughs> so much. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find my demos, short films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the show, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, and Chris. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.